Hi everyone, this is the video to review Cheltenham 2020, the bets and the festival. So, it's a difficult uh, video to make today. Our stakes were 300 and our returns were 308. The profits from the previous two festivals were a lot higher, 167 and 870. And this season, only £8. It's a difficult video to make because I don't know whether it'll be really upbeat that we've made a profit or to be downbeat because I thought I'd do a lot better. But it is three profits in a row, good or bad. Some people will see it as bad to only make that amount. To me, I've always said from the first video that to make any sort of profit at all is okay. To break even is okay. And if you're not going to win, um, making breaking even or getting the draw isn't so bad. On the bets themselves, I felt that they all ran reasonable races. None of them were bad bets. A couple were bad value at the prices I took. But we'll go through them uh, and then make a couple of comments about the festival in general. So the highlight of the festival was on our first bet to run, and that was on Honeysuckle. She won well, and for all the griping and moaning, I think Benny Juju had every chance to win the race. And if they wanted to put Blackmore over the rail just to try and win, that's fair enough. They can uh, they can want to do that. They nearly did that to Brian Cooper and on Monkfish later in the week. Clearly, Townend had had it rollicking and uh, it was win at all costs after that. That should have been a steward's inquiry, really, on uh, Monkfish. He's hampered Time Hill as well. And uh, clearly, that was how they wanted to win the race. Uh, they wanted to have team tactics and try and box Honeysuckle in. I think she won on merit. I think she wasn't doing a whole lot when she got to the front. She was just holding uh, Benny Dujou. And Benny Dujou had almost the entire running to try and pick up a length. And she couldn't do it because Honeysuckle was better in her in the day. Um, the second bet to run was Theatre of War. I definitely got heart palpitations on this bet, thinking he was coming to win. Then thinking he would definitely place and ultimately being disappointed that in a blanket finish, he's finished seventh. It was a good run, a 20 to 1 shot that gave us a, a run for our money. Thursday was where it started to go wrong, because we had three proper bets and one saver bet, and the first of them fell, Riders on the Storm. This was the horse that I, probably Honeysuckle was the one I wanted to win most, because of the way I'd talked it up, talked about the mares, said she should go to the mares, and then, uh, Riders on the Storm was a horse I had to defend the bet on a lot, and I would have liked to have seen where he'd have finished, but he fell, three out, he was going well, and there is absolutely no way anyone can say where he would have finished. It's disappointed, I'd love to know, but that's the way it goes. Dulcita was a bet I wasn't really enamoured with after I'd put it off, because she'd been beaten in a grade three, but she certainly ran well for us as well, finishing second. She came looking like she was going to win, and then on the other side of the park was Concertista just looked like she'd just started the race, just joined in, hacking, and she's beat us, he's beat us hollow, she beat everything hollow. And the thing is, Dulcita would have won easily, but for her in the race, but a second place for us. And then we had a small saver bet in the King Muir on Champion Platinum, that was probably a tenner thrown away. And the, the main bet in the Kim Muir was £20 each way on Kilfillan Cross, who I felt ran really, really well, came to the last neck and neck with Milan Native, and got run out of it in the last 50 yards to finish second and return the 68 to add to the 240 that Honeysuckle returned, and a small profit on the festival. Not what I wanted, not what I hoped for, but after a season where we've had a 20 to 1 winner and an 8 to 1 winner from two bets, it's not the end of the world. I've always said about betting that it's not easy and you can get your backside handed to you at Cheltenham. You can come out of there a lot poorer than you went in. We've not come out poorer at all. The bookies have not got any of the profits back from 2018 or 2019 and they've not got any of the money back from the two bets that we placed this season where we've won. So we have to be happy with that. Well, it's not going to change. So that's the way it's gone for me. I found a lot of the JP handicap winners hard to stomach, to be honest. Um, I found a lot of the handicap winners hard to bear. A lot of the Irish complain about their marks. That's embarrassing, really. That are 
articles by Blake and etc are saying that they're badly treated and a joke. It's either the British handicapper is too harsh on British horses all season and overrating them or the Irish handicappers are basically taking the piss. I'd say it's the Irish. Well, I mean, it's not policed properly for a start, the Irish racing and like. Then they're putting group graded horses, grade one horses actually, into handicaps like Chosen Mate, Sam Roy. I mean, Chosen Mate was a Arkle contender for me, but they've just decided to handicap the horse. The owners will be delighted to get a Cheltenham winner, and Gordon Elliott's got another Cheltenham winner as well. And it was similar to other horses um, that were so well handicapped, it wasn't even funny, really. Um, that's just my view. There was a lot of highlights over the week. Probably the Supreme was the race of the week for me. Um, in terms of quality, I thought the front three were all very good horses. Epitant was very impressive in the champion hurdle. Envoy Allen was extremely impressive. Con Concertista was extremely impressive. The Gold Cup was a great race. I'm not sure if I went through the sixth bet, actually, sorry. We did have a bet in the Gold Cup on Lost in Translation, which would have taken our profit to 338. He ran a fabulous race for us. And um, just got run, of it, run out of it up the running. Third place, another good bet but poor value on the price I got. So going back to the the extremely good winners, album photo and Santini served up a great finish in the gold cap. There were a lot of disappointments. Horses that I talked about on the videos who didn't run well were Defi de So and Front View. Finally, they're both JP. It seems like the ones that were supposed to win won and a couple blew out, but they were obviously supposed to win as well. So, <clears throat> all in all, it's been a festival of, I think, probably frustration for me that I started so well and only just sneaked a profit. Three in a row profits, and hopefully next season we can make it four in a row, but uh, hopefully a bit more profit than that. But it's not easy to even break even, and uh, we just have to take it on the chin a little bit. We've had our successes. I'm going to make some videos for aid and entry. Everyone's been really kind in the comments. You get the odd one, but that isn't. But like that's par for the course. I can't believe I have 600 subscribers. I hope you've enjoyed the videos. Uh, I hope you realise that I am trying my best. I can't always guarantee success. I always said that. And three winners in a row was just unbelievable. The Potter's Corner, a steering for lawns, and then Honey Suckle, the first bit of the festival. It was all going so well then, but we've only just sneaked the profit and no more. <coughs> Excuse me, I could have put other bets up. If I'd put a bet up on Thursday night just to complete the bank, it would have been Santini uh, each way because was, he was a bet to nothing. And he was slightly unlucky not to win the Gold Cup. But uh, at the end of the day, it's sort of a bit of a score draw. But we've not given any money back to the bookmakers. And although it's disappointing, we have to be happy with uh, getting our money back this season. So thanks for watching the videos. I'll be back to you before air. I hope you all stay healthy in this uh, trying times. And I'll be back to you very soon. Bye for now.